how to find the nodal temperatures. In our case, we have four nodal temperatures to find. And we have our mathematical model, that is the boundary value problem. And so we'll go from the boundary value problem, that's differential equations plus boundary condition, to a system of algebraic equations in the nodal temperatures. So you're going from differential equations, or differential equation, to a system of algebraic equations. And you derive that system of algebraic equations using the piecewise polynomial approximation for temperature that we saw previously. And each equation will relate a nodal temperature to its neighbors. It's going to be a linear equation. And so, for instance, if I write the equation at this node, it will relate the temperature T2 to T1 and T3. It won't, you know, it won't involve this temperature, for instance. And this becomes significant as you, you know, as you get more nodes. And so the, the equations would relate only the, the, the immediate neighbors. So we're going from calculus to linear algebra. And the system of algebraic equations can be written in matrix form. And usually, you know, you, you see this form written. T is a vector containing a nodal temperature. So in our case, T is going to be T1, T2, T3, T4. So that's that's what that's going to look like in our case this is called the stiffness matrix it comes from structural mechanics which we will see later um, and that's the the force vector and the boundary conditions will affect that the the heat generation term will affect that again you know bad notation that's uh, that's not the heat generation term that we saw earlier And then, so we have a system of linear equations. We can solve that. That is a matrix inversion problem. So we'll invert that system of um, linear algebraic equations, and we'll get our nodal temperatures. Okay. That is our selected variables at selected points. And once we know the nodal temperatures, we can derive everything else from those four nodal temperatures through post-processing. So if I want to know temperature at any arbitrary point, right, if I want to know the temperature here, I can just use my interpolation to find that. So this is this I'll do by interpolation, and then I can differentiate my interpolation to get the, the heat flux, that is a heat flow per, per unit area. And then the crux of the problem um, reduces to how do we derive our system of algebraic equations such that you know it best satisfies um, our mathematical model. We can't satisfy our boundary value problem exactly, but we want to satisfy it um, the best we can. So we'll take a look at that next.